Welcome back. You're watching The Money Show. And every Friday, we do a segment called Fitness Friday. You're probably thinking why on The Money Show we're talking about fitness because we believe that a healthy mind and a healthy body is what you need to enjoy the fruit of your labor, to enjoy the money that you earn, the money that you invest and everything that you yield from that effort. We're going to be talking about a very crucial element of staying fit and staying healthy. We're going to be talking about nutrition today and joining me to talk about it is Siddhant Bhargava, who is a fitness and nutritional scientist and the co-founder of Food Darzi. Thank you so much as always, Siddhant, for taking the time. Now, I think a lot of people fall for fad diets, a lot of people go in for the really difficult things to do. And I think in a sense, it's similar to a financial plan, because if you give somebody a plan that is unachievable, they'll find it very hard to do so I've always thought that a diet plan is similar to a financial plan uh, how do you construct one that you can actually follow though oh uh, first of all thank you for having me here I think that's very well put a diet plan is much like a financial plan the first thing that needs to sort of be understood is expectations and expectations need to be checked I mean if you go in with mad expectations more than likely you're going to fail and that just leads to a vicious cycle of you trying over and over again and that, that that's what pushes you into fat diets because then you're trying to go at, go at it with everything you've got but uh, your head isn't clear because your expectations aren't checked so the first thing and the most important thing is to check your expectations now moving on one must understand that yes each body is unique and each body is different and keeping that in mind is how you construct a diet plan but there are certain fundamentals that will always, always, always be true, no matter what the situation is, no matter what the diet is, um, what personality you are, what your parameters are, a couple of things always remain constant. Now, first of all, uh, you obviously need to understand whether the diet plan is being constructed to lose weight, gain weight, or to just stay healthy. I think all three of these are very relevant because uh, we've got different kinds of people. Um, one thing that you always want to understand is the importance of protein like I have always told and talked about this that no matter what kind of a diet plan you're constructing the importance of protein is utmost the most important macronutrient when constructing a diet plan is protein the one thing that you have to understand is that one gram per kilogram of body weight is important so for example if you're 80 kgs you need to be having a minimum of 80 grams of protein no matter what your diet is Post that, you start constructing things. So if you're uh, trying to lose weight, one thing which is universal is a calorie deficit, which means that no matter which dietitian you go to, which doctor you go to, which nutritionist you go to, they have to be creating a calorie deficit. What that stands for is you need to be inputting lesser number of calories than you're outputting. Essentially, you need to be eating lesser than what your body burns or via exercise or just being by itself. So the rule of thumb to gain weight is a calorie surplus. The rule of thumb to lose weight is a calorie deficit. And the rule of thumb to just stay fit, to stay healthy is to be at calorie maintenance where your input and output is equal. I know it's got a little technical here, but essentially these are the only two rules that one must adhere to when creating a diet plan. Number one, the importance of protein. Number two, whether it's a calorie surplus, maintenance, or a deficit. Now, post this is when the individuality component of a diet plan comes into the picture. For example, uh, I don't like rice, so my diet plan is not going to consist right. of rice. You, for example, don't like uh, carbohydrates in general, and you just want to be on this supremely low carbohydrate plan, and that could be your plan. Uh, another person loves carbohydrates, but is not um, very mm. fond of fat or doesn't have enough calories left for fat, which means he's going to be on a high carb, high protein, low fat diet. So. After the first two things that I spoke about are uh, taken into consideration, right. post that, it's very, very individual. That's how you create a diet plan in about five minutes. That sounds, that actually sounds uh, doable. And uh, yep. I've always found it very interesting, Sid, uh, that, that deficit that you have to create, right? Uh, it's essentially your resting calories that you find out based on uh, a calculation that you can do and how much you walk around or exercise during the day and you essentially have to eat less than that. But I found it yes. quite interesting what you pointed out in terms of the amount of protein that you need to consume. Can you give me a sense or give, give my viewers a sense of how much 80 grams of protein would uh, relate to in terms of food, quantity of okay. food? 
Uh, let's get the number down to about 70. That's sort of uh, the average protein a person would manage to eat without supplementation. So giving you an example, 100 grams of chicken, whether it's chicken breast or chicken thigh, 100 grams is just about this much. 100 grams of chicken gives you about 25 grams of protein. So 200 grams of chicken is giving you 50 grams of protein. Two eggs consumed in a day is going to give you another 12 grams. So you're at 62. A bowl of curd is probably going to give you another 10 grams. So you're at 72. And a couple of peanuts, almonds, walnuts, all mixed up together is going to give you another five or six. And that's how you achieve 75. So the reality for a non-vegetarian is very simple. It's 200 grams of chicken, two eggs, a bowl of curd and some nuts, which is very, very doable. For a vegetarian is where things are complicated because um, you have to, if you want to meet the 75 grams of protein, you need to include either soy or dairy in your diet if you do not want to include supplements. Giving you an example again, a bowl of dal that a vegetarian usually consumes actually has a maximum of five, six, or even seven grams of protein. It's usually five grams of protein. So when people have this notion in their head that I'm eating two bowls of dals uh, every single day, they're actually only getting 10 grams of protein from it, which is basically nothing. So vegetarian needs to be more aware that dal, soy, and dairy, all three are going to form an integral role. Again, give you an example. 100 grams of paneer has 25 grams of protein, just like I mentioned about the chicken. So 200 grams of paneer has 50 grams of protein. Uh, two bowls of dal have about 12 grams most, so that's 62. One bowl of curd has about 9 or 10 grams again, so that's 72. And again, the nuts. So that's how you achieve the 75 grams in a day. Now, if you cannot, if you just don't like the taste of paneer, for example, or if you just can't eat curd or you can't eat chicken and you want to supplement, that's when the role of supplements like whey protein or plant-based proteins come into the picture. But meeting the goal of your protein intake is mm. paramount. So, yeah, that's more or less it. Absolutely. That makes a, a lot of sense. I do want to also ask, there are a lot of people that are trying intermittent fasting, whether they're doing it on purpose uh, or like me, that they're, they're, they're just missing breakfast because uh, yeah. they, they don't have time in the morning to, to make it. Um, do you have to construct a separate nu nutritional plan for intermittent fasting? Not at all. I mean, um, the, the only thing intermittent fasting is, is it's a pattern of fasting and eating. So instead of eating your three meals that you're eating through the day, or maybe four meals that you're eating through the day, uh, instead of eating them at eight o'clock, 12 o'clock, four o'clock and eight o'clock again, you're now eating at 12, four and eight. That's the only difference between the two. Yes, intermittent fasting will have its own benefits. Uh, say uh, it helps with the insulin resistance. It probably helps with appetite for certain people, but your protein, your calorie deficit, all of that remains the same. The game is still a game of calorie deficits. It does not matter when you eat. It's always going to be a game of calorie deficits. So yes, be my guest, do the intermittent fast. If it suits you, if, it's th if that's your personalization, do it. But the rules of protein, of calorie deficits still will always apply. Sid, last question, if you are uh, doing uh, a lot of aerobic activity, if you are going out for runs, for example, with the intention of losing weight, do you have mm. to increase the amount of carbohydrates for the energy that you're going to burn? Not typically. Uh, what might happen is that uh, supposing you're consuming a certain amount of carbohydrates, you might want to reposition the carbohydrates before your run. Because you might realize that if you say, if you not had carbohydrates for five hours before you've ran, uh, you might start feeling a little lightheaded in your run because you're expending that much. Your body needs those carbohydrates to pull through. Uh, so you reposition your carbohydrates, say about an hour before your run, but you keep the amount the same because you don't want to increase carbohydrates at the expense of something else. If your deficit allows you to have only a certain number of carbs, fats, and proteins, if the carbs had to go up, so either your fat or your protein would have to go down, which I'm not a fan of. So repositioning of the carbohydrates is more yeah. suitable to people who are running. Right. Absolutely. Sid, it's been a really insightful conversation. I've certainly learned quite a bit and I think I'm going to have to look at my uh, construction of my diet. So yes. I'm going to start with that. But it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you. Thank you Perfect. so much. Perfect. Thank you so much for having me here. All right. And that brings us to the end of this edition of The Money Show. It's been an absolute pleasure bringing it to you. Do stay tuned. Lots more coming up over the course of this evening. And this is ET Now.